And you know, I look back to them days and you know, they're some of the best days of my life and we were heading all over Europe playing in tournaments and it was like a family. You know, I was there three times a week. You know, I grew up with these people and they were massive. Yeah. That's Jack there, Jack Wiltshire. Pictures with uh, Maradona. That's Steve Leonard. He's been here so many years. And those are the characters and the people that, that really help to make the club feel the way it does, and they're really important. First heard about Jack Wilshire, Sean O'Connor, who's uh, still a scout here, phoned me up one day when he was at Barnet. He said, Steve, I've seen this little boy playing for Luton against Barnet. Probably within about uh, two or three weeks, we got him in and he played on the pitch. Jack was outstanding. I mean, I was his coach probably at, remember being at 12s, 14s, at 16s. More or less every game we used to play and he was, he was always the best player. You just get that feeling. I suppose I've seen so many kids, I've worked with so many kids. You get that little feeling that you know uh, this kid could be an Arsenal player. The under-16s are at Chelsea's academy in Cobham for a London derby. After their strong attacking displays against Everton and West Ham, confidence is high. But with three goals conceded against West Ham, Coach Birch is looking for a better defensive performance and more control from his 16s. Technique, technique, technique. And the full-backs might start to get round us. If that happens, then we'll flip it to a 4-4-2. Yeah. So we can get our wingers nice and tight. Among the regulars today is a new face, and a name that makes him stand out from the crowd, Maldini. The centre-back is the latest trialist scouted and brought in by Halen's talent identification department. So Maldini, I believe he's played for Albania, under-17s, played against us last year. Yeah, now he has the opportunity to come in with us. Right, gents, talent ID meeting for week ending November 11th. We're just going to pick up a few players that have been flagged to go into the talent poll. Um, obviously, the performance gaps that we're looking at for 16s and 15s um, are still the same position, so that's a right side centre back in the 16s uh, and a holding or attacking midfielder in the 15s. Two players of interest that have been flagged up so Maldini Kukuri. Stevie Leonard did flag him up June 2021. We've heard that he's going to be released from Fulham. So we're going to pick up his fixtures. We've gone through the video footage and watched it analysis-wise, and we think that the lad's got something. Talent identification is big. London is a hotbed for talent. To stay hidden, you know, if you're really talented in football, is almost impossible. There are eyes everywhere. You will get picked up somewhere, or someone knows someone who has seen someone, Basically, everyone is a scout, you know, and we tell that even to our staff, even in the first team, you know, if their son is playing and you see a good player, report it. <laughs> our guys will then look into teams, grassroots, and trying to find a player, you know, that can have a good impact on the academy. Errol, would you stick you down at West Ham versus West Brom? Holding me field player there, doing well at the moment. Ross, this weekend, can you do Watford for me? Look at the potential left centre back we've been talking about. Some will enter academies at under nine, some will stay in their grassroots teams, but there's where the scouting and talent really happens as well. We are always in a position to offer trials, most of the time eight weeks, you know, and then make assessments around the players whether someone's ready or not, you know, to be officially signed with Arsenal Academy. I joined the club way back in 1993. I was still doing a bit of scouting at the time and uh, coaching as well and helping with the kit. So I was doing a little bit of everything because obviously there wasn't as many people as there is now. 
Years ago, when we first moved in the Howling, we thought it was wonderful, but looking back now, there was only two of us that was uh, full-time. I can remember taking a team away to Chelsea or Spurs or something like that, and it was just me on the line with a physio. But uh, we, we loved it, we enjoyed it, and that's how it was then. Somewhere around about 2018, I went back on the recruitment, and that's what I've been doing since then, uh, part-time scouting. Well, I've done this now for 30 years, so I think by now I know what an Arsenal player should look like. I do get this gut feeling sometimes, well, you know, I like this kid. He looks an Arsenal player. Someone said to me the other day, you know, you always say that, Steve, he looks like an Arsenal player, but you just get that feeling. I suppose I've seen so many kids, I've worked with so many kids. I look back at someone like Bakayo. I can remember when he was under nine. My mate said, go and have a look at the nine, Steve, see what you think. This little boy stood out because he was so quick and so strong and a lovely left foot. You know, real 100%, uh, as we call it now, champion mentality, you know, wanted to do well. Eddie Nketiah was released from another Premier League side. I can remember the first night he came in would have been under, under start of the under 15 season and he walked in with his head down and he came over and he shook hands. I said, are you Eddie? And he said, yeah. I said, do me a favour, go out them gates and come back with your head held high. We're going to give you a chance. Once he scored one or two goals at 15s and then he never stopped scoring. Well, I'm out today to watch a right-sided centre-half. The boy's name is Maldini, funny enough. Big, strong boy. He looks like he's got a great attitude. He's quick, he's decent on the ball, he can play. He's good in the air, wants to defend. So he's got the ingredients that we would need for that role. I'm hoping when I do come back, I can say that he's been, uh, he's been as good as what I thought he is. But we'll see. You get that little feeling that you know uh, this kid could be an Arsenal player. And I certainly feel that about the boy Maldini. Soon after Steve's scouting trip, Maldini was offered a trial at Hale End and began training with the 16s. My name is Maldini Cazzore. I play centre-back. My parents named me after Maldini. Obviously, he was a very good player. And like, I have siblings and all their names begin with M. So it's like carrying it on, like that's kind of where it came from. Do you think they, they thought that maybe you were going to become a second? Uh, I don't know, to be honest, but uh, I'm happy it's worked out that way. While the talent ID team are confident in Maldini's ability, his inclusion is also key to the development of other academy talents. Some players you'll have will have footballing ability and they will have good executive decisions, but they'll lack physicality. You won't release those players. Um, they're whispering talent, slow burners, so we'll sit on those players and, and allow them to develop. Now, when you get a situation like that, you need to add a bit of physicality to the rest of the team. A player that can support the weaker units. So someone like a Maldini, we didn't just look at his executive decision-making, his mobility, but we also looked at his physicality. It's a huge day for Maldini, as he plays his first game for Arsenal. Trialists only have a short time to impress in their bid to earn a longer placement at the club. Obviously, it's a tough team. They're one of the best academies in the country. I had like, the first game away, it was a bit of pressure, but this was like my chance, I felt like, to really make a mark for myself. Maldini's in from the start and plays alongside regular centre-back and captain Lewis. Watching from the Chelsea dugout is Hale End graduate Ashley Cole, who was a few years ahead of Birch in the academy. Oh, a bit much. Got a little one. Good try. Keep trying to play between them, yeah? Opposite side. Oh, wow. Miles is highly rated at Hayland, and he's justifying that with a dominant display in midfield. Brilliant tackle that. There are plenty of tackles flying in. Yeah. It is a London derby, of course. It's a foul, mate. And Maldini is looking right at home. First thing I think about when I come into a game is like, I need to get a good start. Once I have a good start, then you can get into your rhythm. Now I love this Maldini kid. I love him, mate. He's a proper defender, isn't he? I don't think I'd want to fix the kid. No, no, I wouldn't, would you? Hold on. In we go. We'll go in. It's goalless at the break, but it's been a promising team performance and a solid start from Maldini. There's plenty more to come from him in the second half. 
Arsenal start the second half brightly, and Ethan carves out a chance for Ishmael early on. Arsenal's intensity is high, and they're in on goal again. This time, Amari. Amari, stick at it! Stick at it! Put him in. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. Please, Lord. How can we win? Come on! No. That's the thing. They keep banging on the door, and a big chance falls to set. Though Arsenal aren't managing to put the ball in the net, Maldini hasn't put a foot wrong. Tony Adams would do that. Even John Terry's come out to see it. Like, I love making a tackle. It's like smash a couple of players, but everything's part of the game. When I saw it back on the video, it was like quite big, so I think I made a big impression with that. After the game, everyone was saying they were surprised that I did that, but that's just my game. Miles continues to rampage through the midfield and drive the team on. He fancies it now. Good lad, good lad. Yeah. It's like Jonah Loma, isn't it? He picks out Ethan right at the death. Goalie's been outstanding, mate. They're goalie, yeah. They've got to take responsibility for those moments. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot, yeah. Have a good one. When, it, when it's fine margins and you want to be a top finisher, you've got to score. It's a good team performance that could have been a win if not for a man of the match display from the Chelsea goalkeeper. But it is a win for the talent ID department as Maldini's debut shows a lot of potential. I think he's done great. It shows that the, the scout and the talent ID department have found a player that really fits that position. I really enjoyed his defending actions, really enjoyed it. And that desire as well with, within Jules to, to sort of dominate his, his direct opponent. And on the ball looked really, really calm and collected and brought a bit of calm to the group. And Today, he should be really proud of himself, and I hope he enjoyed his, his game, because I enjoyed his performance. It boosted my confidence. I felt really good, to be honest. I went home happy, but all I was thinking about was that like, next session, because you can't just have like, one good game and then expect to get into the team. You have to look beyond his physicality, and you have to look at, is that the measure of his success, or is there more behind him? So if you take Maldini, Harry reads and positions, um, and initial action in the moment for best, best outcomes is very, very good. For Maldini, time is of the essence. As he joined relatively late in the year, academy management only have a few weeks to decide on his scholarship, when this decision process would ideally be formulated over years. <music> Meanwhile, the under-15s are travelling to Crystal Palace for their Floodlit Cup quarter-final. The group stage was full of highs and lows, but now the boys can fully focus on the knockouts. It's a special day for everyone connected with Hale End, as on the way to the ground, the England squads are announced and three recent academy graduates are selected. Bakayo Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe are called up by Gareth Southgate, with Follerin Balogun picked for the under-21s. It's a boost before their big game for the boys to see Hale Enders recognised by their country. Come on then, Arsenal, let's go. Away you go, yeah? Louis Copley returns to the starting eleven after a long injury layoff and drives Arsenal's attack early on. It's really good to start, and players are 10 alongside a false line as Dan, and we link up very well, so I think it'll be a very good game. Dan, Dan, I need more. Yeah, come on. Palace get a free kick in a dangerous position. What's the ref doing, landing a plane? And take full advantage. Oh. There's more Arsenal pressure after half-time. Run, Jakai! Run, Jakai! Louis is showing glimpses of his huge talent. Such a chance, such a chance. But the boys just can't find that bit of quality, and Palace punished them on the break. It's the end of the road for the 15s in this competition, who can take heart from a hard-fought campaign with a lot of learning. In more news around international call-ups, Ethan is selected to play for England under-16s. And goalkeeper Alexi gets the call-up from the Colombia youth team and he travels to South America to represent them for the first time. It's nine o'clock and I'm just waiting to get on my plane now to Cartagena via Bogota. 
Back at Hale End, the talent identification team continue to produce the goods, as another recently scouted talent, midfielder Zach Schwab, comes into the under-15 side on trial. Zach was originally picked out by Hale End scout Charlie, who spotted him whilst playing on a trial with Chelsea. Played against another target that plays for Fulham. Thought he'd done quite well in a position, sort of stopped him from playing his usual game and, and that was why he stood out for me. Realistically, for me, he fits into our pillars. He started well, being selected regularly and he scored a crucial goal to help the team progress in the Floodlit Cup. But Zach has a unique story. Whilst back in the day, top level footballers were generally found at local comprehensives, these days they're discovered at a more diverse set of places. In this case, probably the most distinguished private school in the country, Eton College. I definitely say that people were surprised when I told them I'm at Eton and I'm also signed at Arsenal. There was one coach that said, it's, it's, it's never going to be good for your football. And, you know, I just tried to, to prove him wrong. But it, it definitely is very sort of difficult. And I understand why people would say that the two worlds aren't compatible. You're trying to be at Arsenal, which is one of the best clubs in the world. And you're trying to be at a school, which is one of the best schools in the world. And you're trying to sustain those two. And it is a huge challenge for the boys because it is is a lot of pressure. There's a lot of work. The school don't care how, how tired you are. But it's very demanding. That's life. Life is demanding. For Zach, settling in at Hale End has been easier, as he's alongside school friend Daniel Oyatunde, who plays up front for the 15s. There's always the, the stereotype that Eton boys are stuck up. I think nowadays it's not like that. It's a nice environment. There's some good people there, and yeah, enjoy it. After a positive trial period, Zach was signed up by the club. But the boys' focus on their education hasn't wavered. Makai Osaka at this club, I think he got straight nines in GCSE and A stars and A level. So that shows it can easily be done if you really, really want it. He has to find a way to maintain the two because education is, is key. You know, his mum would not have it any other way and I wouldn't have it any other way. Later in the week, the under-17s welcome Indonesian side Garuda Select to Hale End. The Arsenal side features a number of boys from the under-16s who are playing up, such as Lewis, Ethan and Michael, but also Maldini, who has continued to impress throughout his trial, but is still awaiting his scholarship decision. I think with his mum, they've been let down a few times now, and uh, it seemed that the club he was at beforehand, they was telling him about how well he's been doing, and the feedback that the mum got was, yeah, everything's on track, he'd be all right, and I think she had in her mind that he was more or less going to get a scholarship, and it didn't happen, so, it's my job to calm her down and say, look, everything's going well so far. But I think at the moment, it's, it's, I've got to say, speaking to a few people, it's, it's looking good for him. It's a win for the under-17s, with goal scorers from the group that are playing up and another solid performance from Maldini. At the end of the day, you know, anyone will tell you that you want your defender to be a defender. You know, first and foremost, their job is to defend, and he can do that. He'll put his body on the line, he'll make them last-ditch tackles, and I think he's added that little bit of strength and still at the back that they was probably missing as well. At the end of the game, there's news waiting for Maldini. After the game, I remember my mum just telling me they're going to sign you. I was like, over, I was a bit speechless to me. I didn't really know what to say. Obviously, once we got home, we celebrated, like we had a nice meal and yeah, everyone was really happy for me. When I look at him, you know, in possession, out of possession, he has helped the team so much, you know, to grow and to calm down really, you know, in, in a year of, of a lot of, you know, kind of pressure, he has been a, a real rock, you know, in that defence and, and has helped us. It's about taking that chance, any chance that you get, getting in the 18s team, then once you're in the 18s, looking to go to the 23s and then who knows where it can take you, but just think like taking it one step at a time gets you far. Any time that coach comes up and goes, Steve, we're signing the boy you brought in, it's always rewarding, hey, because it's Arsenal Football Club. You know, I've seen so many kids over the years where they, are, they can come out and a few skills and they can drive out from the back into midfield and break the line and that's all lovely and they can hit a big diag, but can they defend? He can defend, he can do all them other bits but he can defend as a proper, he, re he relishes defending. He has got lots of attributes that um, are, gonna, are gonna help him to become a, a good young footballer. Okay, we've not been on tour for a very long time, have we? Brilliant experience, one that I really want you to embrace and show how good we can be. Come on, Sam. 